Uh, can someone see the light switches and maybe turn off something around this area? Is that possible? Sorry? North, middle, south. And it requires keys. So maybe not. Oh, wonderful. Fantastic. Wow. Okay, okay, this is still in my favor because light does not help me. It's all. <sighs> God damn it. All right, you know what? I can, I can fix this. I can fix this. All right, let's see. Now, how's that? All right, there we go. Themes, it works. All right. Um, yeah. There we go. Nice. Okay. So we were supposed to start already, right? Well, let's start then. Hi, everyone. Hi, How's it going? So that I wasn't expecting an answer. I'm happy to hear though. So um, I want to talk about web scrapers. Web scrapers are a thing that I really, really, really like. My first pro program were uh, web scrapers. I remember trying to download all of the episodes of a, a comic that I liked and, and classify them because you can download them. It's a lot of really fun stuff that I do with web scrapers. And I haven't done that in a long, long while. And I got back to web scraping. And it's something that I like so much that I wanted to give a talk about it. So um, before we get started talking about web scrapers, should I, I first, first should start with what those are because not everyone knows what they are. Uh, I've uh, brought a few pictures to try and help guide you through what they are. Um, this is a skyscraper, okay? Um, this is a regular scraper. You can get a sense of a theme here of scraping, right? Getting out. This is a, uh, I think this is a spatula actually. Never mind. Let's, you know what? We'll move on. Getting off topic. What web scrapers are basically uh, an application that fetches a web page analyzes it, and extracts information from that web page. Now, I'll give you an example. If this is a, a web page that you have, very common, right? Um, some HTML, and you have today's Tuesday, and you want to grab this part here, the Tuesday part. So uh, what we would need is to create a request. This is an example of using HTTP request, create a new request, um, and get an object. So we're using um, the class HTTP request because the help helps formalize an object that represents a regular request. We provide the method, get the URL, and we receive back uh, from this URL um, an object. Then we would have to actually issue the request represented by that object. Um, fetch the page using user agent, um, LWP user agent, and we call request on it. We send our representation of the request and receive back a response of type HTTP response. We represent a common HTTP response. And then, of course, we analyze it because it's Perl, we're, all, we're also going to extract in one single step. So we take the response, we go to the decoded content, not the content, but the decoded content, very important, and we use some regular expression. You'll see that we have some uh, grouping there in the slash W to grab the, the day, and I, I tend to use this kind of form for quick if conditions. So if it works, we'll print it, we'll use the dollar one to grab the day. Very simple. Um, we have now written our very first web scraper. Now, um, we can reduce it a little bit. You see the method there, the get. Um, the thing is the user agent allows you not just to send a request, but to also already send what you want, and it will generate a request for you if it's very simple. So we can use the get keyword there. And then the URL, we'll, we will obviously send the URL instead of our request object. So we just move that over here. We can now remove this. Much simpler, cleaner. Um, so, so far, writing a web scraper, done. Uh, next step, continuing. The next question is, uh, well, we know what it is. Why would we do this? Well, there are several reasons. They fall under two categories. First category is when a website has no API. And by API, I mean a proper way to receive information from that website in a structured form. Some websites have no APIs, and that's when you want to write a web scraper. A few reasons. First of all, it's possible the guy who wrote the website or the, the woman who wrote the website, whoever it is, they, they haven't thought of writing an API. It's possible they didn't know how to write one. So 
yes, I do have a website. I know what an API is. I just don't know how to do it. Um, it's possible they don't want to have one. A lot of people have a, you know, a CMS system and maybe you, know, you don't really know how to activate it or maybe you think, well, no one's going to go to my website and use an API. I have just a gallery and you're just going to see it. It's displayed and that's it. On the other hand, a website could have an API, but still you might want to scrape it. Uh, it's possible that it has limitations. It might not cover everything. So maybe you can only make certain, a certain amount of requests. Or you can't get, a very common thing that you can get is um, recommendations. So you go to the website, you get all of the products, and usually if you go to the website, you get all of the recommendations of what people got when they were looking for this specific product. But you won't get it through the API because they'll reserve it to their own cool engine and algorithm in the background to force you to go to the website instead. So you don't get that. Um, it's possible the API is not comfortable. <coughs> PayPal. Now, um, <laughs> it, uh, it might require authentication or authorization. That's the I11N, uh, A11N, A12N. So sometimes it's like, no, you have to register and you get a token, you get a user and password, and maybe you even, maybe even have to pay for it, which sucks because sometimes you just want to write this small one-off script to play with something or, or you know, you're not building a business necessarily and it's really annoying when a lot of places don't even let you play with the API. So it's, it's very annoying. And then even though there's an API, you still want to scrape it. So after I did this, I realized I really didn't explain why you wouldn't want to write one. So. <clears throat> The biggest thing, HTML can change. That's it. It can and it will change. Um, but so can APIs. I don't know how many of you have worked with APIs that change. can't break up on you, yo. <coughs> Google. Now, it, <laughs> APIs can change. It happens. Um, and they can break very easily. So, you know, it's a problem, but it happens with APIs as well. So moving on, we know what it is. We know why we want it. Let's talk about how. So if we take a look at this, it's kind of, you know, you think about this and you look at it and go, well, I guess it works, but do I really want to write this for the rest of my life? And the, the good news are, no, it, it isn't the way it's going to be. So what I want to present in this talk uh, are the tools of the trade, which actually I should name this my tools of the trade, because then someone always, always comes over and says, well, why don't you use this module that I know that you did not mention, I think it's the best module in the world, you should definitely use it. Probably because I don't like it. Feel free to ask me afterwards, and I'll tell you why. But what I do want to present is the stuff that I do like and I do use. Use whatever it is that you want, but this is stuff that I like. So um, I'm going to start with uh, www.mechanize, which acts like a browser in an object. I'm going to explain that, and we're going to talk mostly about web query, uh, which is kind of like a jQuery-esque interface, but in Pro. It's really nice. So, First, mechanize. Very simple. Um, the idea of mechanize is that it's a browser in an object. It's an object that represents an entire browser. Now, it has state, which means that it understands what part of the website is now. If you have, uh, you're working and you, you make one request and then you move forward and you move back, and it understands that. It has state. Um, it has credentials, users, and uh, passwords and stuff like that. It understands cookies and it stores them and you can reuse them. And it has forms. It actually understands, analyzes, and allows you to, to submit forms as forms. It's a concept that if you're working with HTML, it, it, it's the representation of what HTML is, which is really nice. Um, and links and images. And if there's anything to convince you that it thinks like a browser, is that it has a, a freaking back button. It, it has a reload button. So it really thinks in the sense of a browser. Um, and it's mostly used when you want to crawl a website. It's a very good web crawler because then you can move next and to the next, uh, to, to the next, um, next link, the next image, get all the forms, the third form, click this button, stuff like that. It's really nice. Here's a quick example. If I use Mechanize to create a new object, I'll call get just like with WP user agent, and I'll send the web page URL. Now, you might have noticed that <clears throat> there is no response. And that is because it has state, which means that once you do a get, thank you, once you do a get, um, it actually is stored in the Mac object. You can, however, provide the response and then you will return it and you can use that. So it'll be the same thing. Uh, this is an example of a post. Instead of a get, you, give the, uh, you call post, you give the web page URL, and you have some parameters that you give. We'll play with those, throw, throw a username and password in there, right? Um, we can even submit a form. We just need to give the form name. Um, in the fields. If we have links, we can just find them and then we can work on them. We can even search them according to some kind of 
pattern, in this case, a pattern for the URL using regular expressions, which is really nice. Um, and we'll get back links in the form of an object, that, that, that mechanized link. Now, um, let's mix some of these things together. So we have a post here. Um, for each link, we're going to call that object's uh, attribute URL in order to post to that URL. Um, over here, the four, call the URL on each one. The parameters are empty, so let's expand those. Let's get some parameters in there. Um, we'll put them in. Um, we'll add all the other stuff that you've seen, and now we have a different crawler, which was possibly used um, <clears throat> now, uh, shorting up a little bit, so moving uh, the forward down there and adding the parameters looks a bit nicer. So this is, this is pretty good. It's nicer code. I don't actually want to talk about uh, WW Mechanize. I wanted to talk about this thing, but I had to kind of wrap it nicely. So that was so far. Web Query is what I actually want to talk to you the most about. It is my new favorite tool. Uh, it is a very nice scraper with a jQuery interface. I'm not a jQuery person, but it really is nice, and you get used to it very quickly. It is selector-based, which I will expa explain. It was written by Tokihiro Matsuno, which I have probably butchered his, na his name. I apologize. He is a very prolific writer. Um, Japanese hackers, in general, are really, really crazy in a good way, and I really recommend checking all of their stuff. And uh, Yannick Shampo, who is here somewhere, um, probably not in this room, um, got a commit bit to it, which means you need to watch the fuck out. Um, so it has a bunch of other really nice stuff to it. So, quick example. Suppose we have this web page, which we have all gone on, right? It's the HTML uh, 401 specification, read the entire thing. It, you know what, at least, at least you're all being honest. I appreciate that. So assuming we want to scrape that and get a few things out of it, let's, let's pick these things over here, the titles. What we would do is start with WQ, which is the main function in Web Query. We give it a URL over here, and once we give it the URL, it will fetch the page and it will start crawling it. Now we only have to tell it how to crawl the page. So we start with find, and we give find a specification of selectors, which are classes or IDs of the elements in the page. Um, so call find, give it div. This will match a div, and it will provide the content for it. Now after that, we ask for a head, so we get a div that has a class head, so we will match that part over there. Then we go to the DT, which would match a DT, and get the content of it. Now, we can call each to basically say, well, not just the first one that you find, all of them. And for each one, we want you to run some subroutine. So we call each, and then we provide a subroutine. The first thing that you get inside that subroutine is the index number, okay? So we call shift, we get it into i, and start from zero, so zero, one, two, whatever. We print out uh, $i plus 1 because it's humanly readable, and uh, the, the default scalar, scalar underscore, um, is uh, localized to the element, a web query element object that represents the certain element that you are now on in each subroutine that you run inside the each. So this part, and which is the, a web query object, you can call text on it, which would basically give you the text of that element. The content, really nice. So if we take a look at this find, it would actually match the divs through here, the class as well, and then the DT will find this, and once we call each on it, we actually get each one of them. Uh, in the subroutine, dollar underscore will represent each one of these elements, and if we call text on it, we get the text of each one of these elements, very simple. So when we have this code, we basically print this thing. Very, very, very simple. Oh my God, I will have to speak faster. So I started doing a lot of things with web scraping. The first thing that I started doing is downloading podcasts because I listen to several podcasts. So I started with Welcome to Night Vale. This is the page. Um, you get to each one of those, and then you have to press a button, and then you get to this one, and then you have to press another button. So I started uh, downloading again. I'm going to go here a bit faster. You give the URL, you do a find table, a specific table, take the T body from it, take the TR from it. Then for each one of these elements, you get the title by walking that element and looking for a TD and an A. The first href that you get from it, get the text for it, and we get a file name. Check it, of course, if it already exists. The episode URL will be finding the TD with a link that has a class BTN. The first element, and then we get the href for it. So now we have the link for downloading. Um, so we take the episode URL, look for one with an ID download, for a button there, 
call attribute href, and now we can download it using IO all. We would just give IO one URL to another uh, file name, and that just downloads the entire thing into a file. Very simple. OK. Criminal is another um, podcast that I was trying to download. Um, it has this website, and then you click on one of this. And I don't know if you noticed that, that the, uh, uh, the number of the episode, it's, it's, it's damn it, uh, episode 15 is neutral. So this is in uh, letters, not in numbers. But I wanted it in numbers. So uh, you do this, and then you have to go to API SoundCloud, and then you have a client ID, and you have to get the client ID from somewhere. This was a nice challenge. Starting by getting each one of the article posts, um, going to the entry, using uh, Unicode to remove, because there was one fucking right single quotation mark that was in Unicode. So, <laughs> yes. Ah. Uh, remove that. Uh, get the attributes of href. Keep doing this. And then, of course, use this cool new thing. Um, well, it's not new. Uh, lingua English uh, words to nums to match the episode, grab that part, replace it with the actual numbers, the digits, and add .mp3 to it, and we have a full file name. So it's really nice in one go. I, I, I love Perl. So uh, I get this, and I check if the file exists. Then, of course, the uh, episode link, which was you know the content, then go into an iframe, get the source of the iframe, go to the source of the iframe, download that, because it's a widget in JavaScript. Then you go through that with regular expressions, and you uh, find the production URL, which might or might not be URI encoded, but just for a slash. Um, and we fixed that over there at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. And then you're missing, but it's just downloading this thing. So that was a really nice challenge. Now, after I did this whole thing, I got a tweet uh, from Miyagawa. And he asked, so why don't you use the RSS? Because it, it <laughs> And I was thinking, you know, I, I, I thought, you know what? It was a learning experience. <laughs> and he said, cool. He said, well, okay, that's not so bad. So we got out of that one. Moving on, though. Um, <laughs> schema.org, that um, uh, Getty told me you could never get this. Schema.org, the idea is to help you uh, provide schemas for specific objects that are very common. The only, it's supposed to make the web accessible, except this is not accessible. They've made this completely inaccessible, which is really, really annoying. So this is the only thing they need to download the entire thing and generate Moose classes from all of it. Really nice. <laughs> I've noticed, thank you, I've noticed that uh, the municipality that I live in has trash pickups because, uh, well, you know, we have a lot of recycling in the Netherlands where I live right now, and I decided to find all the trash pickups instead of putting, uh, sitting down with the uh, calendar and putting in all the dates. And I found they have a website. Uh, this is how the website looks like. You put your postcode, you put your address, your house number, and it tells you which days has which. Now, this is in Dutch. I can't read this. I can read the English version. This is nicer. And then it tells you which day they, they pick up for which thing. So you do this, and I start, well, I can write code to do this. Um, get the prompt, WQ, find the div that you want for each one, get the year and the month, uh, take those out, uh, and parse the entire box, and that's it, and I have all of it. And it's really, really nice, and then you feed it to your calendar or whatever it is you want. But then I thought, well, I can do more. Um, I really like async, I really, really like async stuff. Um, the streets, my municipality also has on its website the list of all of the streets in the municipality and a history of each one, which is really cool, except it's in Dutch and I have no idea what it says. But I thought, well, I can get this. So the, the area is called Amstelfane, so I can do this. This is how it looks like. Each letter, you go by letter, and then you get the street, and you have the description of each street. Well, I can do this, and this is a good example uh, for doing something in async, because then I can asynchronously call each freaking letter there, and oh my god, I need two more minutes. Okay, so um, you use any event, and with any event, what I do is do a begin, do an HTTP get, um, and then I feed the result into WQ, which doesn't only operate on URLs, but also operates on HTML bodies, so it's really nice. And then I can grab all of these and do a CV uh, at the end. The pull request challenge, getting all of those to know who is actually assigned to my stuff? So I wrote this thing, and then it tells me, oh, this are people are assigned to your stuff. I use CPAN authors to get all the people that I work with and who's assigned to their stuff. Uh, I found this. This is not as nice. This is much nicer. Um, you can see that Stephen was assigned with two things in the first pull request challenge that he didn't even remember he wrote. Um, but can we do better? Uh, I thought about mixing web query and answer to and any event. It just go nuts. And what I did here was um, 
I basically did the same thing that I did before for scraping all of the uh, trash pickups, but instead it is now a, a web interface that even provides an API in JSON. So you make a request to this little dancer app that asynchronously goes to that website, scrapes it, and returns a response. Single thread, async, and scraping. So in conclusion, the purpose of web uh, scraping. The first thing is automation. It's very important. I was sick of looking for a website to see if a shipment was done. I wanted to know it automatically without going each time putting in my details. It's very important. Transforming all of the displayable information into actual accessible data, which is a big different, the difference. The, the difference is from something that you can view to something that you can use. But the most important Above all of the things that I've shown you that might be useful to anyone ever, which probably aren't, um, <clears throat> is the main reason that we should web scrape. It's fun. Thank you. No, it does not. Um, I find handling JavaScript on my own much more challenging. The only problem is that it's not that challenging. People do, don't do really crazy things in JavaScript to prevent you from scraping. I've, I've done this 